Hello, I am making a presentation on Indian Research Information Network System, the software developed by InfliBnet Center at Gandhinagar. This software manages profiles of scientists, faculty and researchers. Let us look at the issues that we have, the challenges that we have. For one thing, research activities of faculty members or researchers or scientists is not known within organization as well as across organization, which makes it a problem for interoperability among institution at national level. The second thing is that publications do not necessarily reflect expertise of people. So one have to go beyond publication to look at the expertise. And it is hard to find right experts for uh, research collaboration as well as for the student. He does not find right guide to you know, guide his research. Many faculty members or scholars do not even know what is happening within their organization because there is no such interfaces available for people to interact. And there is no common forum within an organization or across organization to interact for faculty members or for scientists. Now, what is the solution? The solution is to develop an open source research information management system that can collect, organize the scholarly communication activities of faculty members so that aggregated and curated data could be used for research reporting, for decision making, as well as for and many other things, for example, ranking of institutions, for comparing to departments, for comparing to faculty members, for selections and all. So what InfliBnet has done is we have developed uh, open source software which is called Indian Research Information Network System with funding from National Mission on Education through ICT. At present, IRNS is available as software as a service on the cloud. So it is available freely to every Indian institute on the cloud. And in future, it would also be available as an open source research information system for people to download and uh, you know, put it in their own servers and organize it. Now, if you look at the issues that we have or the component of information research uh, system is that you have faculty profile and every faculty profile will have its affiliation, its publication, citation, H index and things like that. You have department profiles, faculty profiles collectively becomes departmental profile and departmental profiles collectively become institution profile. And if several institutions use IRNS, then you have a national profile of scientists and faculty available in the country. So this is the basic architecture starting with faculty, which is I would say the building block of IRNS cumulated to department and further cumulated to institution and as well as at the national level, once it is applied across the country by several institutions. Now, let us analyze one by one. First is faculty. So if you look at a faculty, what do you need? You need your publication, you need their citation, you need their H index, and all these things are collated, collected automatically by IRNS using Scopus, using Web of Science, using Crossref, using Google Scholar. So there are multiple so sources where this information is sought from. The other information like personal research profiles, uh, the awards that are received by him, all these things are collected by Orchid ID. Orc ID or Orchid ID as you know is a unique ID of a scientist. Most scientists do require them. So as you can see in the interface, it has uh, publications coming from Web of Science, coming from Crossref, then H index coming from, uh, from Google Scholar as well as Crossref as well as from Web of, uh, Web of Science. So the multiple sources of uh, information is given at a one place. You can also see that Google Scholar is also integrated for individual faculty members here and not only publication, the detail of publications, each one having their uh, citations, each one having their uh, uh, impact stories or alt matrix is built into the software. So you can see all the components including uh, authors network is also available for a given faculty. This is the picture of 
authors network. Now, as I mentioned, the faculty profile, the profiles of scientists put together becomes a departmental profile. You can see here is a department profile, several uh, faculty, every faculty have their own uh, sites with publication, citation, H index and every detail that you can see in the previous slides. So this becomes a department profile including all publication of a department, all citations of a department as well as H index. Now this gets cumulated into institute profile. Now here is a screenshot for Indian Institute of Science uh, profile management system where it gives total number of faculty, their designations, their total publication coming from Crossref, from, from Web of Science, from uh, uh, Scopus and other sources and their types of publication whether their research article, their books, chapters in books, their conference proceeding, the types are also mentioned and finally there is H index coming from Crossref, coming from Scopus and then again you can from the institute you can go to department, you can go to individual professor, all search interfaces are available including Solaris uh, uh, search factors and uh, so you have a lot of filters to build upon. Now this institute profile, if several institutes are using them, becomes a national profile of scientists put together. We do not have an example here because uh, there are not many institutions who are using, but you can look at uh, the Indian Institute of Science profile here. You can also see that various department, H index of various department is given as a comparison. How many uh, what department has produced how many articles and what is their index, what is their citation, what is their total contribution to the institute. This is all visible in this slide. Now let us look at the functional use of IRNS. Uh, for one thing it is automated updation of publication and citation. Nobody has to enter them, they would come automatically, they would be fetched automatically from Scopus, from Crossref and from other sources, even Google Scholar. Awards and grants, is awards and grants are managed from Scopa. If you have a crop, uh, Orchid ID, it is taken from them, otherwise one can enter also. Annual academic reviews is also available. Profiles and CV of and single sign-on facilities available. Then it can also be linked to institutional repositories, to a national digital library to domain specific repository and across for institutional search and it also facilitate expert search, search, research, external research assessments and ranking framework. So it, the IRNS can be linked to and can be used for multiple purposes. Now let us look at the data flow and sources of data in IRNS. For personal information and for research activities, the data is driven from or ORCID ID, from CVs, from HR division. The multiple sources can be used for populating personal information of a scientist. Publications and information, like I mentioned, publication information comes from ORCID as well as uh, Google Scholar, as well as from uh, Crossref and Scopus. So there are multiple sources for. Uh, publications. Impact, especially altmetric figure, we use a software called Legato developed by Place, uh, PLOS and of course Web of Science and Scopus and Crossref. So these impacts come from those sources. Now the data can be linked to data repositories and to DSpace in case you have institution repositories or the type of data whether it is open access data or if it is uh, toll based data that uh, information is also available. Finally RNS feed can go to uh, research reporting for NIRF ranking for India rankings and other platforms. So basically output for IRNS can be used for various purposes. This is another look for uh, where the data come from like I mentioned for personal and academic up things it come from HRI system, from NIRF data bank it can come, from AICT data banks, from ORCHID ID 
and from linked even linked can be a source of information for personal information we use third party sources for citations and publication including orcid scopus web of science pubmed crossref google scholar microsoft academic id loops and repax open source software we use a group of open software for developing irns for example we use uh, solaris and uh, elastic search face view vivo core ontologies vidwan database is also integrated and for profile updation again like i mentioned or kid faculty member and nodal officers can contribute to it and uh, finally this data is prepared and add on and merge into irns system and of course the output and deliverables is that enriched faculty profile updated all the time in real time the data is taken from scopus crossref and other sources it becomes a feed to nrf to other ranking system national and international research reporting and analysis and research productivity of faculty departments and organization is reflected and of course one can find similar expert where you can collaborate with them now coming to irns implementation at institution level what you need is basically you need names of the faculty uh, uh, names of the faculty their orc id their microsoft id their uh, web of science identity so whatever identity is available is one requirement of course once those things are available once identity is available publication data citation data uh, social media matrix alt matrix co-author networks these things can be built into so basic building block its profile uh, is is research id of faculty members which then other data is can be fetched from different sources so like in this figure we have shown we have developed irns at iic bangalore at iit chennai at iit mumbai iit delhi is also in the progress so once these inputs are given it is filtered and fetched into irns and from irns into vidwan database so what we do is we apply filter and selectively take faculty profile from irns into vidwan so that vidwan becomes a database of selectively chosen scientists from across the country now let us look at the major features and functionality of irns there is a dashboard dashboard is for the organization head who can look at the the important scholarly contributions their citations and there is a features for academic identity where which is integrated with academic identity for systematic updation of publications citations citations are fetched from crossref google scholar and from other sources and they are whether they are open source or they are available freely or toll based is also given there are search facilities that is supported by solar based facilitated search analytics facilities are available where research progress of a faculty department of institution is reflected then it provides a co-author network and this network can be built for a for a author for a given years as well as for the entire uh, length of service also social media matrix is available uh, using old metric techniques and open source software and this product of irns can be linked to various institution repository to full text articles and to the domain specific repositories so these are the major features for functionality of course once multiple number of institutions use it then it is possible to compare one department with other department for example one can compare the productivity citations and publications of physics department of delhi university with physics department of iit delhi so that kind of a cross institutional cross departmental comparison 
would be possible. Of course, cross faculty uh, department uh, comparison is also possible. Like I mentioned in the beginning, at the institution level, comparison in respect of research productivity, in respect of uh, H index is already variable. But that can then be extended across institutions if it is used by multiple institutions. So what are the basic benefits to stakeholders? Look at the researcher. Why would he be interested to use IRNS? The first and foremost thing is that all his publications are fetched in real time from across different sources, from Scopus, from Web of Science, from Google Scholar, from various sources. And his archive is also integrated. So whatever he, uh, the data that he populates with in cross uh, in Orchid ID is also populated. So he does not have to re-enter his data. Only once he has to do it, maybe in Orchid ID. And even if he doesn't do it, if he makes his Microsoft ID and Google Scholar ID, that data is fetched automatically. So in a way, he can see his recent citations, he can see his old metric at a given time on real time basis. So of course, faculty would be interested to use it. Then coming to research administration, they get to see the entire spectrum of their scientists and their activity. Their profiles can be seen. These profiles can be contributed to you know, India rankings, to NIRF, to international faculty. So it doesn't have to make, make multiple reports. The same database would feed to IRNS, to, it, it would feed to Vidwan, it would feed to NIRF and to multiple sources. They have to report to the ministry. So those reports would be readily available for a research administrator. Funding agency, they, they should be able to see look at whom to fund and uh, what, what are the performance, what are the uh, past record of scientists. So that can be easily viewed and accordingly they can take a well-informed decision about funding of research product. So national level and multi institutional research to facilitate expert finding for research assessment is one of the basic uh, useful criteria for funding agency. Now, like I mentioned, the multiple institutions who have already implemented IRNS fully, like Indian Institute of Indian Institute of Science has done it, Central University of Pondicherry, IIT Madras, IIT Delhi, and uh, National Institute of Technology, uh, and Alagappa University, Pondicherry University. So several of them have done, and there are several that are in pipeline. Like I mentioned, the service is completely free. It is offered as a software and as a service, and uh, it's available for you. All you need to do is contact Infribnet and uh, you know ask them how to populate your own IRNS. We can help you with that. Then if you compare IRNS with other international product, let us look what are the features that we have in comparison to the other software. The other software that we know of is called Pure from Scopus. So if you look at the admin, admin model, both of them supports it. Reporting model, import model, award management model, all of them are supported by IRNS as well as by Pure. Then national assessment model. We have it, Pure have it, but IRNS does not have it as on now because we do not have that many profiles. But profiles are there, once IRNS are used by across IITs, universities, this module would be built into. Let's look at some other feature, data capture. At IRNS, we do use uh, using Scopus, Web of Science, Google Scholar, Microsoft Academic Research, Orchid ID, PubMed, and Crossref. In case of Pure, they have added Mendeley also archive also and couple of other sources which we do not have access to but I, I hope that everything that is meaningful is already available in IRNS. And of course IRNS also have an interface where faculty can enter their own data also that facility is available. For citation count, 
pure usage scopus, we use crossref as well as scopus. Alt matrix uh, badges are available with both, publication counts are available for both, co network is built by both, expert finding the technology that we use is map of science, whereas pure use is fingerprint technology. Data import, uh, the RNS support BIPTEX and CSV and uh, pure supports RIS and BIPTEX standard. Now, looking at some other uh, aspects, application setup, pure is proprietary and hosted on cloud. RNS is open source and hosted on the cloud again. Then, uh, uh, of course, these, uh, if you look at the financial aspects, the pure cost $54,000 per 1,000 faculty, whereas RNS is completely free of cost. It is MHRD funded projects and it is available completely free of cost. Once it is fully developed, we'll also offer it as an open source software. Second year, Scopus uh, uh, Pure charges about 25,000. We do not have any charge on this product. It's completely free. If you look at the distributed IRNS infrastructure, right now it is on cloud, but ultimately it will be available as a distributed service. So, there will be multiple installations across institutions. We will have a kind of a harvesting service where the data of profiles will be fetched, harvested into IRNS and from IRNS it is again filtered to go into uh, um, NIRF and other applications. So, and ranking frameworks and others future development, what do we plan to do next? As the data comes, as new institutions join, we'll have insight into what are the issues that they are facing, we'll attempt to it. But what we would like to do now onwards is we, we use, plan to use mean stake framework for a better performance. And we want to use MongoDB, which is much more sturdy and non-SQL database. And of course, Node.js and Angular technology would also like to use. Coming to data analytics, which is uh, which is going to be a very strong component of it when many more institutions join, and we will have a national scenario to be seen, to be compared, to be project. So, uh, publications and citation, which would be much bigger databases, national and international collaboration, uh, we should be able to project, and we'll be able to contribute in open access and closed publication access also. Now, faceted search, it already supports faceted search, but that would be make more stronger and faceted search would now bring data from various institutions and populate the analytic features of it. The linked data, we are increasing like to use linked data, which will link to other aspects of it. So, we will also integrate it Vivo technology, which supports semantics search and semantic uh, viewing and uh, viewing projections of systems. So, this was in nutshell on uh, IRNS system. We will be happy if you contact us for implementing IRNS at your institute. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your patient listening.